I've spent the past few days in Northern Ireland exploring the city of Derry and the legendary Causeway Coast, a magical coastline on the far north end of the island where the Atlantic Ocean and the Irish Sea come together. The Causeway Coast is one of the top attractions in Northern Ireland, and I can't imagine a better way to experience it than from the seat of a kayak. But Northern Ireland has much more to see and do, and so I'm heading towards the capital city of Belfast to discover a one-of-a-kind cliffside hiking trail and to get a different taste of Northern Ireland paddling in Strangford Loch. Paddle Tales is produced with support from NRS, Aquabound, Wiley X, and PHC Kayaks. I've always said that kayaks provide the best way to explore our coast, but here just outside of Belfast, there's another really cool way to explore the coast. This is the Goblins. The Gobbins Cliff Path is a one-of-a-kind hiking trail that wraps itself along the Antrim coast, just outside Belfast. Built and open to the public in 1902, it became an overnight success, attracting visitors from across Ireland and Britain. Shut down during the Second World War, time took its toll, and despite a number of attempts to reopen the path, it largely remained closed until 2016 when it reopened after years of hard work. Pretty wild to think that this path was actually built in 1902. <laughs> what a, a feat that would have been. It's been knocked out of commission a few times by landslides for decades, but it's back in full force and it is a cool, cool experience. The trail is about a mile long, and right now it's a there and back trail, but that's gonna change really soon. They're just finishing up uh, another section so it becomes a complete, uh, basically a loop. A mile winding along this shorefront, chiseled into the cliffs. Super cool. Well, we got ourselves a beautiful calm day for this, but I can only imagine what it's like when the wind's up and there's swell crashing against the rocks. Be a little sportier. You know, I've always felt that kayaking provides this really unique way to see a place, to experience an environment. And it's true, but I've now found a new way to experience a place. Cliff walking. I like it. I'm on Strangford Lock. I'm just south of Belfast and it is a beautiful but crisp morning. I've hooked up with John from Mobile Team Adventures and we're going for a paddle. We're going to be cruising around the, the lock, hopefully see some wildlife, but and hopefully pick up some mussels along the way to have a shore lunch. But first I need to get my pack yak built so I can hit the water. What's the, what's the plan for today? We're here. So we're here. 
just a white rock. So the plan is what we do, we go over and explore an island, see if there's any seals over Hen Island. Okay. We then go towards uh, Skechel Castle, which you will see across there. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so, cool. We won't necessarily get out there, but then we paddle around Skechel Island, and we go around towards Rainy Island, and we then go around to the Muscle Beds, around towards Nendrum, the Elastic site, and then we'll probably come back out around Trasna, and then go and explore down towards Dara, and then back up. I love islands. Fantastic. <laughs> Lovely, eh? All right. Go and explore. Yep. And if the plan changes, well, that's the plan. That's the plan. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Michael nice. Stratford. Yeah. You're welcome. I brought the sun for you. Fantastic. <laughs> sun is good. Welcome to Stratford Lock. Oh, thank this you. Is, <laughs> this is on my doorstep. This is a pretty nice backyard you have. That's <laughs> lovely. Sometimes I say it's my office. Strangford Lock is a fantastic area because not a lot of tourists know about it. Most people would actually go up to the north coast and this is actually a secret or a hidden gem just 20 minutes from Belfast and people are actually starting to realise actually even the locals this is on our doorstep and it's a spectacular area. You've got the wildlife, you've got the you know the birds, the seals, um, recently we've had dolphins. Um, it's absolutely beautiful. Oh, where we are this actually dries out quite a bit so this will be quite muddy across here. Um, at low tide, so it's only going to be a few feet deep. How much? Uh, how much of the a tidal range? Have? I didn't actually look at the tidal range today, yeah. but the tidal range is usually around like three and a half meters. In fact, they're on the screen. It probably is three and a half meters. Three and a half meters. Okay, so yeah. we're going. We're definitely going to see some current today. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely see some current. All right. Strangford Lock almost has the feel of a freshwater lake but it's definitely not a freshwater lake. There's a little bit more complexity to it. it. It's in a nice sheltered area, at least the side of the lake that this bay that we're paddling in has islands. So even if the wind picks up, we can hide behind some islands and avoid big choppy water. But there's four meter tides here. That means you're gonna get tidal currents. It also means you have to plan your route around low tide and high tide because some of the areas can go completely dry and turn into mud flats. It's a more complex paddling environment, but still feels very similar to lake paddling. So I think we better get some mussels. So I tell you what, this, this water is rising quite quick. Yeah. So a lot of these mussels could be under water now. We might have to be swimming. Yeah. That'd be a good one for them. <laughs> yeah, right? that's not going to happen. Right, <laughs> if we break out here then. So Mobile Tim Adventure um, is an outdoor pursuits company. We're literally what it says on the packet. So we are a mobile business based in Belfast um, that will cover most of the north. Um, we work with young people, older people, youth groups, corporate groups, but we specialize in canoeing and kayaking. One of our experiences, obviously, which we're doing today is Glide with the Tide, where me being a chef, um, a trained chef, we've actually, we've sort of go foraging for mussels and then cook up um, the fresh mussels with local produce. So whiskey coming from Eckerville Distillery, and the foods coming from indie foods, which is all Irish foods. So be very careful because they're going to be sharp. All right, so basically what you're after is probably, I don't know, about an inch, inch and a half in size, not okay. too small. Um, and literally just pull them off. And what we do, I've got a net bag here, we're covering a net bag, and then we then clean them all up, and I'll show you how to clean them up in a minute. So just collect a whole load. All and right. We collect about half a dozen each or whatever. This is uh, pretty easy hunting. <laughs> it is easy hunting. <laughs> Obviously, if you can Ooh. find clean ones with less mollusks on them, obviously they're easier to clean. Okay. Oh, I see. Oh, there's a beauty. I love foraging for anything, for berries, I mean, for mussels now. And the trick I've learned to foraging is to go with somebody who knows where what you're looking for is, because you can burn a lot of time trying to find that thing. And that's the challenge, is knowing where you're going to find them. Basically, finding a needle in the haystack. No, nothing there. Anything there? No. Come on, there's got to be something. Nice. 
Well, I'm not very fast at this, <laughs> but getting her done. So the way to forage for mussels, basically you're looking ideally for the tide to be going out. Um, you're looking under, around the rocks or on the seabed, um, underneath the weed, and you're actually sort of pick the mussels, ideally with the least amount of mollusks on them, because basically you'll then have to clean the mollusks, pull the beard off, um, and obviously what you don't want to do is put those within your, your source. So you can either use a knife, I mean, if you've got a knife, got a knife you want one, but if not, what I tend to do is actually just rub them against each other. Okay. But obviously it's sharp, and then just rub them against, and then knock off the willocks, the um, mollusks. Oh yeah. See the little beard? The beard's a bit that holds it onto the rock. Yep. Pinch that and pull it out. Obviously that's the chewy bit. Uh, and what okay. you don't want to do, we don't want to be eating that bit either. So it's the perfect time to be picking them. So yeah. it's, not, it's a winter food, it's not really sort of a summer food. Just too hot. Um, too hot, but also they spawn. So they're spawning during the summer. So what the, the normal saying is that obviously, um, if it's got an R in the month, it's okay to pick them. Okay. So like September with an R in it, you know? <laughs> Foraging for mussels obviously is, can be a high risk thing. Um, first of all, you need to think about the season when you're actually picking or foraging for mussels. Um, so ideally, you want to be going in the winter months, um, where they're where actually for, foraging is actually not a very accessible place. So obviously, we're going by sea kayak. So we're actually doing it in a sensible way. We're only sort of taking a few mussels at a time. Um, in the season, I was in the winter months, when there's not spawning going on during the summer, and it's literally just a taster. Well, I would say we have enough for a nice snack. Happy days. Fantastic. Happy days indeed. Brilliant. Well, we found our seals. We found a castle. We got the mussels, now it's time to find somewhere to cook the mussels. It's food time. This area is really special to me and to other people because of the rolling hills, the crystal clear water, the green islands, the wildlife, the birds, the seals. It's absolutely spectacular. It's just so different. You know, it's, it's just beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Food time? Yep. Food time. So yeah, I'm a trained chef. So I did like a three year apprenticeship years ago and then um, worked in university colleges to start off with. But literally went to college and trained and I loved, the, loved it, loved the passion. I don't necessarily want to be in a kitchen. I want to be in the great outdoors and, and now I'm in the great outdoors and I'm still cooking. You know, on the odd occasion, it's lovely, you know, but it's a different environment. It's a much better environment. You know, it's not a hot, sticky kitchen, which is great. Do you want to stick the mussels in? Yep. The reason for why I, I started foraging for mussels was basically because you pass these mussels on the shore. They're fresh, they're delicious. Um, and with my experience, I believe that obviously I could create a lovely dish using local produce. Then after speaking sort of to local suppliers, then decided obviously you know, let's try something different and unique. Whiskey. Not very many people use whiskey to cook mussels and cream and garlic. So we just suddenly thought, you know, it'd be a fantastic idea and something different. Um, and they taste delicious, you know. There you Thank go. you. They're stuck in. So you've got the young buck cheese, which is from Newton Ars, just up the road. You've got the um, Hispani, which is obviously we bought all this food from Indie Foods. So local um, foods produce. We've got Abernethy butter, we've got the Guinness Wheaton and the Ballylist cheese, and there's some chutney. If you want some chutney, get stuck in. Wow. 
what a great way to end a spectacular day on Strangford Lock. I mean, what a beautiful place. I definitely have to say a big thanks to John from Mobile Team Adventures for showing me his backyard. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'll, I, this is a place, any place like this, but I, it's a huge area, so many islands, there's a lot, lot more to explore. I've just scratched the surface, so I'll be back. If you're interested in uh, in the kayak that I was using today, I did a full review of the Pakiak uh, portable kayak, and I'll leave a link in the description box to, to that. Otherwise, here's what I can tell you. My biggest learning from today is that I, you, we all need more paddling buddies who are chefs. <laughs> it elevates the whole experience. <laughs> we do have some more food to eat, but we also have to keep moving because we've got a lot more paddling adventures to come here in Ireland. So stay tuned, a lot more videos and adventures to come.